Let's get into it now. A spoiler-free movie review of The Substance. I'm going to say at the beginning of this review, already putting The Substance in the running for horror movie of the year. It is a movie that completely blew me away. I knew very little going into it. I'm actually recording this review the night after opening night. I went to go see it on September 19th, right when it came out. And I wanted to capture this energy and this feeling that I have right now because I am so enamored with this movie. There are very few things I did not like about it. And obviously you're watching this and hearing this at a later date. Maybe it has picked up more steam on social media through word of mouth. That is actually how I was reminded of this movie. I was getting a haircut yesterday and the person who cuts my hair, we always talk horror movies. And she told me about this movie and I kind of forgot about it. Only thing I'd really saw before was like an article and maybe not even the full trailer. And I thought, I'll go check it out. I like Margaret Qualley. She's been in some good movies this year, like Drive Away Dolls, Kinds of Kindness. I can't remember the last Demi Moore movie I saw. Dennis Quaid to me, ugh, he kind of gives me the ick. I don't really enjoy any particular movie that he's in, except for The Day After Tomorrow, The Rookie. But outside of that, his movies don't really speak to me. Don't get me wrong. He's a great actor. I just think his movies aren't really geared towards what I like, but he blew me away in this movie. And all I really knew about it, it was Demi Moore taking some kind of drug that made her younger. So yeah, just a reminder. I know I share it with you guys all the time, but there are original movies like this coming out every single week, but they don't have the same marketing as some of these other movies from the big studio. So they don't get the Burger King meal tie-in. You don't see them at the grocery store on cereal boxes. These are movies you do kind of have to seek out a little bit, but if you are not going to see and support movies like this, you are missing out, and you also can't be in that conversation of saying, everything's a remake, everything's a reboot, everything's a sequel, because this is proof that great original movies are being put out every single week. And I will say at the beginning of this review, too, that don't think it's a movie for everybody. It has a lot of nudity, has some blood and guts, so if that's not your thing, I get it. But man, if that is your thing, you have to put this on your list immediately. So that's why I'm recording this review now to share with you later to capture this energy. And hopefully by now it has generated some more word of mouth because I think this is a movie that we do have some more horror movies coming out later this month and in October. But it's in the running for my favorite horror movie of the year and possibly my top 10 movies of the year so far. So what is the substance about? Well, Demi Moore plays a character who just turned 50 years old and she is struggling with the process of aging. She was a big star maybe a decade or two decades ago at the start of the movie and she is looking back on all those times. She is working in this morning show doing this aerobic style workout class that is aired on TV and she walks through the halls of all the memories of her when she is younger. Dennis Quaid plays this big executive who is over the top, very hokey, very campy and on her 50th birthday he essentially wants to get rid of her because she's not young and vibrant anymore and that is something that greatly affects Demi Moore's character. So what does she decide to do? Well, she finds out about something called the substance. And the substance allows herself to create a better version of herself. So it's this black market drug that you take and another version of yourself is spawned from you, but you together are one. The catch is that every seven days you have to switch back. So for a week, you are your old self. And for another week, you are the better version of you, but you have to keep this balance in order to keep everything right. So that's the question that this movie asks you. Have you ever dreamt of a better version of yourself? The movie is rooted in feminism and the pressure that women have to look young, which is unfair. As guys, we don't have this same pressure. I don't know about me specifically, but guys are supposed to get better looking with age. I've never been good looking whatsoever, so... Maybe I'll just get less atrocious as time moves on. But I know that there is this pressure on women, especially in Hollywood, for women to look young. And women in Hollywood always get compared to the younger version of themselves. Again, it's unfair because it doesn't happen to men in Hollywood as much. The roles that are pitched to women as they age get smaller and smaller and a little bit more pigeonholed. And again, this is completely unfair. And that is what this movie is focusing on. 
And it does it in a very disturbing and unique way. And this movie felt so original to me, even though it pulled a lot of inspiration from old monster movies. And I wouldn't even consider it a traditional horror movie. It very much feels like a scary fairy tale, kind of like an episode of Black Mirror, but expanded on and adds so much more visual substance. And depending on who you are, you could see this movie as corny or you could see it as campy. And there is a very fine line in between those. And I think it comes down to intent. And I could see how some of these scenes could be viewed as being a little cheesy, but I think it's all intentional. It's from French director Coralie Farja, who did an amazing job with this movie. And for me personally, I think it's the best movie I've seen Demi Moore in, above Ghost, above G.I. Jane, because I feel that she took this movie for a very specific reason, because she digs really deep in this movie, gets very vulnerable, and I think that's something you would only do if you felt a very personal connection with wanting to bring this character to life, and maybe a little bit the character mirrors her career, and her experiences in Hollywood. If you see this movie and all the things that her character goes through, it is pretty brutal to watch at times and to think of being an actor, putting yourself in those situations, putting it all out there, and just giving an amazing, I would even dare to say, Oscar-worthy performance. This isn't traditionally what I would think of an easy Oscar contender. I think it would have a pretty uphill battle to be in contention for an Oscar. Horror movies are often unfairly left out of that conversation, even though I think it's movies like this that spawn a conversation that really have something to say and do it in a very stylistic way. They need to be considered more. Horror movies often get the shaft, and maybe it's because they usually come out in September and October that by the time Oscar season runs around, everybody forgets about them. But I think if there was one horror movie in the last five years that really needed to be considered, it would definitely be the substance. And then you have Dennis Quaid, who plays this executive, very over the top. He is like this little burst of energy, this kind of gnat that's always in your face throughout the entire film, saying these things that will make your blood boil. And it's so over the top and so superficial that it really works. And I didn't really know that he had a performance like this in him or even want to do a movie like this. And even though I don't love a whole lot of his recent work, I think The Long Game was the last movie I enjoyed him in, even though his character was probably my least favorite in that movie. I will go back to his OG movies like The Rookie, The Day After Tomorrow. He's great in those, but I know he's a great actor and it really shows in the substance. And then you have Margaret Qualley, who kind of won me over in her show Made on Netflix and since then, it's had a pretty good run. Just this year alone, I think as an actor, she is still on the search for her one signature film. The substance is definitely in contention, but I think Demi Moore steals the show overall. The only real criticism I have with this movie is I do feel it goes on a little bit too long at two hours and almost 20 minutes. There are also a couple of moments that I feel the movie goes a little bit off the rails and confuses you just a little bit as the viewer and kind of loses his identity and at times it kind of does feel like this free fall that it goes on but I think director Corley was trying to capture that chaos and it is a risk to do that to say I don't care how absurd this is going to be how some people might feel disturbed I might even lose some people maybe even run the risk of have people leave the theater a little bit early but she committed to it and I can respect that for the substance, I give it a strong 4.5 out of 5 syringes.